regionally as well as globally. There are three basic uh, threats there. One is, um, one is strengthening governance and coordination towards learning and action within the RC. So it's coordination of the RC community. The second one is about capacity building within the RC community to enable it in a more mighty way engaged within their own uh, communities as well as with the global ones. And number three is really encouraging the uh, linkages between global and local, uh, between the sustainability global processes and uh, processes happening in the community. Quite easy, yeah? Coordination and governance, strengthening capacity as well as connecting local uh, activities to uh, practices. So along the number one, which is strengthening governance and coordination. So what we hear very strongly, and now the last panel brought it very uh, ably forward as well. So linking to national level, to government and other stakeholders and policies would need to be much more emphasized in our collective work. From our side, we will be uh, facilitating quite a few activities, including introducing you to the focal points of different sustainability processes, to UNESCO global uh, uh, national focal, uh, focal points, to national commissions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is uh, action number one, which might need to be uh, happening. Continental coordination is definitely strengthening. Sometimes the continents are, po are appointing coordinators, some coordinating groups, and definitely there is a trend towards uh, a combination of the action plans. At least in two, no, three of the continents it's happening. Uh, working with youth group uh, was brought forward as a priority uh, area again. But this time, what is interesting and important to know that youth group took also some responsibilities upon themselves to communicate between the global community and their own constituencies within the continent, including with translation into the languages. Huh? So now, uh, thematic clusters of activities, new ones, in addition to the ones which we traditionally as a community working uh, with, such as sustainable consumption production, health, biodiversity, uh, teacher engagement, et cetera, et cetera. Some new clusters such as TVAT, migration, uh, working with disenfranchised youth are emerging and what is quite important for us to find out quite coherent way to bringing them as a group together, enabling those interested RCEs to work on this uh, thematic new emerging clusters and connecting them to other relevant sustainability processes. So that's going on. Now, uh, in line with this, uh, what is happening now, yesterday you heard about this from Philip and Hannah, mapping of the RCE projects and tagging them and connecting them is going on for us to easily find them but also find synergies between them and find new emerging activities and clusters uh, across the RCs. And finally, you heard again the whole session, well, Hannah spoke about communication, engagement, and various uh, processes associated with this, which will push forward, and we are, of course, only sac be successful with this if you are uh, becoming part of it. This is second priority area which, uh, which falls under strategic priority enhancing the capacity development of the RCEs. Here, uh, the, the notion of course-based activation of the partner networks uh, came forward. Uh, what it means that while we are thinking about capacity development courses with the RCEs and for the RCEs, we would try to turn it from simply a course, one-off, into some kind of development, continuous development process. And two or three ideas were suggested to start these actions, including the evaluation and assessment, which we discussed uh, yesterday, as well as professional training, which would come out of collaboration between different international higher education networks, including PROSPANET, including International Association uh, of Universities, including AISHA in North America, including Copernicus Alliance in Europe, and potentially some more. So we are quite committed among those networks to get together and start developing tailor-made courses for RCs and with RCs. Now, uh, 
ICT assisted learning is very much on the map. We are happy to have with us uh, Michelle Ricard, who is a professor and UNESCO chair in this area. We are exploring together with uh, various partners, and Hannah is at the center of it, opportunities for ICT assisted learning, including for those kind of areas, but not limited, okay? This is also happening. And of course, um, one of the things uh, which, which comes over and over, but we would have to do it particularly for the sake of the new RCEs and RCE candidates, to do a little bit more communication and information on how RCEs organize themselves, how do they manage uh, themselves, though. but not to turn it into blueprints, but really to do quite uh, quite a sophisticated communication. We have a good starting point, remember, because uh, RC Portland, uh, Kim Smith actually did some of this kind of observations already, but we can do quite a lot more with support of her team. So this is a priority area number uh, two. And finally, uh, for the uh, topic of strengthening the impact of the RCEs towards global sustainability processes or national sustainability processes, we are thinking about what we call again codification of experiences. In other words, when you went today to all of these wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful field trips, which also were discussed during the first day of the conference, so you saw the practice, but what is really exciting, what will be very exciting, to record the methodologies which led to realization of this kind of activities. And be, so by abstracting it from the practice itself, it, it becomes mobile. We make it mobile and able to communicate better to others so that others can uh, get this methodology on board. Now, Engaging RCEs with ASD and SD related international policies by direct or indirect participation in those, uh, in those processes, GAP, IPBS, sustainable consumption and production re related processes such as 10 year framework of program on sustainable consumption and production, climate change, uh, migration related, TVET related uh, policies would need to be attended. Now, Another quite important one is work between science on the science society or science community and science policy interfaces and how to nicely conceptualize and give tools which enable RCEs to do it much more effectively. So the science society again has, uh, uh, is on the good track because what you see today in the fields would be recorded through cases and transferred into methodology, variety of methodologies of engagement, and therefore might be useful and instrumental for others to, to do similar things. Two more points. We think it's time to re revisit the concept of global learning space. You remember it has been very much in the discussion when the whole RC community was at its infancy, but we feel that perhaps getting it again forward would help us to very uh, profoundly communi communicate and promote the RC community. Huh? And RC, uh, and what we also would like to do, and it was sort of coming in the previous uh, slide, RC, uh, RC is really seeing as a process of localizing the global agendas. Yeah, so translation function would need to be done there. So what we, at our level, from our corner, uh, at UNU see and what we want to see, continuously to see more. So we see that RC is becoming a community of many, many learning to, to, together towards change, definitely. Uh, we see that there is a co-engaged learning, uh, so there is a possibility for co-engaged learning as an inspiration and also test bad for the global policy. So we can take on board whatever the global discourses and language is there and see how it makes sense in our local realities, or maybe not. We also see there is a translation of this global ambition. So what does it mean for the schools, for the local community, for the universities? What does the language of IPBS mean? What the language of 10 YFP means, etc. So it is a translation from global to, glo uh, to local, and it's also testing 
uh, of the ideas global and feeding it back there. And finally, what we of course see that we are already a movement uh, which business cards is saying unity and diversity. And this is a quite profound uh, definition which we collectively develop towards Akayama. So this is our reflection and with this may I just invite a few uh, members of the community perhaps to share their quick impressions about the uh, conference and not so much about the conference but about collective learning and observation which happened in this big forum. Anybody? Thank you very much. I just want to make one observation and possibly suggest for subsequently, if it is possible, to have policy makers more in our midst. I remember when we met uh, Kakred, there was a mayor of Grand Rapids. He was very inspirational. And having them together with us will always ease the communication of some of this beautiful work to these policymakers. Because at the end of the day, whatever you do, you need them. When we say policymaker, not necessarily the politician, but even at the level of some international organization whereby, like in Okayama, we had the UNESCO, uh, I think Director General was with us in one or two of our sessions, trying to maybe in our next global meetings, if it is possible, let us have a very, very strong political policy makers uh, round table where we can put this kind of thing to them so that it will be easier for some of us when we go back home. Thank you very much. Good point. We continuously try this. We can do better naturally, point taken. Uh, Please come forward, so maybe here's a mic, there's a mic, so please. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for having me. I'm really an outsider here. I come to this conference as uh, with an experience of practice, as a commentator. Uh, uh, I, I've associated with, social with the social sector in the past. I'm an academic. I teach uh, environmental sustainability as a science. And I thought that I pretty much understood the, uh, the field. But what, I, uh, what I'm seeing here uh, is uh, in the last two days, I've had the most stimulating, uh, the most inspired uh, kind of dialogue that I, uh, I couldn't have imagined it before I'd come here. So I'm really happy to be here, and I want to thank each one of you to, for having me and for uh, this sort of exposure that I'm taking back with me. We're hoping to apply for an RCV status by next year. So this is really a steep learning curve for me as well. But I think the, the real point that I want to make, and uh, uh, I think this is a real reflection for me as an academic, is that uh, what we're seeing here is not just the description of something that's multisectoral, and intersectoral, because this is what, you know, this, is, this kind of transdisciplinary thinking is something that I've been working on in my work or as an academic for the last, uh, you know, at least half a decade. But what we're really seeing here is a complete paradigm shift in the way we do things or in the way things have been done in the past. And I think we're all part of that historic, uh, and I, I, I venture to say that it is going to be historic movement. And I thank you all for, uh, you know, guiding and leading us to that. Thank you very much. And we really look forward to welcome you officially uh, into the community, though, of course, you, are already, you and your colleagues are already part of it. We, we hope you feel this way. Thank you very much. Are you? Thank you. I think the key thing is um, uh, the aspect of uh, knowing what, making yourself relevant where you are at the local level. Because I will not work with you if you, you are not coming to help me to achieve what I'm supposed to achieve. And I think out there, everybody is doing something. 
every institution is doing something. So RST is, because you already have that area, you have already been given an area, uh, we should take interest in what the others are doing. The private sector, uh, the local banks, what are they doing that we can, uh, we can, we can help to upscale, okay? So that uh, as you tap into my resources, you are also helping me to achieve my mandate. Uh, I talked about the government, for example. In Kenya, uh, budget, uh, budget making is public. And uh, meetings are held in every county for the public to approve the budget. If you don't do that, somebody will go to court and challenge. And I've been asking Alsis, what is your agenda when you attend those public participation meetings? At public participation meetings, they say we are going to construct roads, we are going to help communities to alleviate poverty this way. And it's a lot of money, and that is the only planning meeting that is there. The same case for national government. They also hold public participation meetings. So if we could make ourselves relevant by giving our memoranda, which we have discussed in our RCs, then we would find ourselves influencing decision making at the local level, uh, not only for government, even for other institutions that are operating locally. And that way we will not be seen like we are just begging. We are not beggars. RCs are not, they, they, they do not beg. They, they want to participate in development at the local level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. This is uh, a reflection I said before in a forum like this, and I think I want to say it again. Uh, I think we should extend this movement to both primary schools and secondary schools, because it's just like a vicious cycle. The graduates from universities are the ones that go into the secondary school and teach. And these uh, children from primary schools are the ones that are admitted into secondary schools and finally into the university. So most of us here may not change their attitude where most of us are 40, I think the youngest is 25. But if we start teaching this children's sustainable development from kindergarten, primary school, I think this movement will be more successful. Thank you very much. Um, well, my comments, um, it all comes down to what you were explaining in the presentation, and I don't want to sound repetitive, but I also want to mention that uh, we had a round table on migration, and I think that's also a very important topic that we finally uh, talked about with uh, our colleagues, and we had people from all over the world. It was not only a European topic, so um, I'm, really, I'm just really happy I want to share this, that uh, we agreed that this is not just a problem that Europe is suffering, and um, it's happening all over the world, uh, Asia, America, Europe, uh, everywhere. So um, we're already we're just gonna start a group, we're gonna start sharing um, our experiences, share our, um, the way we're working with immigrants, and hopefully next meeting we're gonna have a presentation for everyone to talk about this topic, which, because it's affecting everyone right now. And it's a topic that we really have to, to approach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Professor Arma? Thank you very much. Uh, one my uh, comment is, since uh, we are going to work on SDG, to accelerate our RCS activity, it needs inter-RCS collaboration. And I hope many of them uh, do not have the sufficient capacity uh, or uh, financial capacity. Those who have the, uh, the, has the capacity uh, to develop the project, they should to work together to the other RCs that um, we can develop our acti RC activities faster. Thank you. The 
This is another important, of course, uh, addition for capacity building through peer uh, coaching and peer engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to congratulate the uh, organizers and all the uh, UNUIS <laughs> staff. I think you made a very tremendous effort to make this conference a very good one. I learned a lot from this one. Um, if I may be allowed, I would like to suggest three things on the next conference. Um, we know that all the speakers and the panelists are all RCE people, uh, I mean the collaborators. I would like to see a panelist that would feature the beneficiaries of our projects to talk about it. And how they really see the projects, how they benefited from the project, and really share their more aspirations and, and what do they expect to, 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 uh, to have in the near future. The second is um, I would like to see much more um, discussion on how do we address the needs of special people, uh, people with special needs, uh, because this is also part of the SDG uh, in, in under the inclusive education. And I think they're the more neglected uh, part of the society. The third one is, I don't know whether we can identify champions already from among the RCEs in terms of the SDGs, who are working on what particular uh, goal. And so we would like to see, ah, uh, this RCE could mentor another RCE as far as if, if that RCE would like to go into that depending on the needs of the communities that they are working with. Thank you very much. Mari. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing that I would like to say that this is my second time to attend a global RCE. This time round, I, am, I have to say that the volunteerism of the committee and the organizers, it has awakened me the second time. I am just wondering how much we can contribute to the effort and the sacrifice because I have learned a lot in terms of when I go back, I actually don't know where to start. I have been knocking doors, but I think the volunteerism um, movement has made me to knock more doors in the private sector so that I can move the movement forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mari. Which, oh, Daniel. Daniel. And while Daniel is, is taking a mic, so it's probably also a fantastic chance for all of us to say first that focus on the community engagement of this conference has been quite a good one. And secondly, Mari Ersioka Yama, it was a fantastic decision to award the Okayama Award to the RCE Job Jakarta. And we saw it in full action today during the, during the field trip. So the, the field visits and, and what insight they gave to all of us on how systematic, long-term, thoughtful, and ambitious engagement with the community gives to, both to the community and to the university from the point of view of education, empowerment, and research as well. So we are extremely happy, uh, and we thought that it was one of the absolute highlights of the university. And now to you, Daniel. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as I reflect on the whole of the concept and practice and what I've gone through, somehow I feel I'm happy but not so happy. And the reason being, I remember in 2003, we were debating this concept of RSE with Snyder, Kasunori, and Marshall Chodre, and others in, 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 in UNU. And I remember that time, the number of things we said. 
One, we expected stakeholders, among others, educators. We talked to, and among educators, we talked about universities, technical schools, secondary schools, primary schools. Then we talked about other stakeholders, municipalities. We talked about chambers of commerce. We talked about libraries. We talked about museums, parks. All these were supposed to be actors, industry. Now, when I see what we are going through, it looks like the biggest burden has been left to the educators. Where are the other partners? I think it's high time we went back and revisited the concept and revisited and asked ourselves what happened to those ones who are supposed to be partners in this concept. We are moving, but it looks like probably we have strong heads, but we have got some weaker parts which are not able to help us achieve some of the goals. We are talking about challenges. I've been discussing with my colleague here, but where it comes from, the challenge is solid waste. Educator, solid waste management. Educators, you can talk about it. But translating the talking into the actual practice, we do our best, but I think we need the hands of the others to do more. And I think it's time to challenge ourselves on how do we get those other original actors to play their rightful roles. It is still a challenge, I still feel. I've worked with RSEs back home, and I've noticed a university which is spearheading is living next to an industry. But convincing the industry to work with the university is a challenge. And remember very well at the beginning, we believed that universities are fountains of knowledge. They, have got, they are full of solutions, which are stagnant there. Let us create RSEs and let this knowledge flow out. Let these capacities go out. Let the solved problems be solved. But are we doing that as expected? I'm yet to be convinced. Thank you. Daniel, and thank you for reminding about our times in 2003 when we started to talk about the concept at this time about RC. I arrived to UNU, and the first person who I met there was actually Daniel. We, I still remember we met at the elevator of the headquarters. Right? So, um, no, Mari, it means that you need to, uh, first of all, knock at more, at more doors when you're back. Uh, and another one is, uh, in fact, uh, that, um, and this is a, it's just to signify that we, we recognize the challenge and think along the way with you because only yesterday we said that uh, engagement of, of NGOs, of civil society, and exploring modalities of engagement as well as with the private sector or with the municipality as sort of, again, methodological solutions, stories of success, while well, training of capacity of engaging with all of these different partners which speak different languages and have different realities would, would have to be coming quite stronger as a push from our side as well. Uni, I can see you holding hand, and I, I actually, I bypass uh, some others who wanted to speak uh, because I know that Uni is going to talk to this point at this moment, it's exactly to the conversation which which you brought forward. Uni, you, oh, here. Thank you, Daniel. I think it, this is a very pertinent point, and we have, we have somehow felt that gap, because we are addressing educators, but the civil society organization, I mean, the whole sector of informal and non-formal education. So in the yesterday's evening reflections of the team, this point was very well brought out, and we discussed it. We are very conscious about it. We are looking at, uh, Zenaida showed three methods of engagement and capacity development, but especially the ICT-mediated learning and the first one, first category, we're very consciously thinking of how to address non-formal and formal education. And if you had attended the biodiversity session, one of the main discussions was about, and also in the policy brief that we are bringing up on biodiversity and uh, associated traditional knowledge, uh, one focus clearly that is, I think, it's, it's a real feeling that that sector is being neglected a bit now. 
Okay, thank you. And another uh, extra point to this, in fact, what we see that perhaps the most potent way to re-engage would be really through thematic challenges rather than through question of reform of the educational system. And those are complementary. So biodiversity would be one avenue. Another which we are trying to really bring forward is, is really through sustainable consumption and production. But very well taken point. We are aware and we will try to see how we can facilitate it a little bit. So I saw some hands there. Did I not? No. Then, Teresa. Quiero agradecer el, la hospitalidad, la solidaridad del RCI de Yogi Garta. First, I would uh, like to express my gratitude for the solidarity and the hospitality of RCI Yogyakarta. Eh, la gente en Indonesia es maravillosa. The people of Indonesia are simply marvelous. Agradecer también a la Universidad de las Naciones Unidas por el apoyo y estar presente en esta reunión. And to express my gratitude to the United Nations University for your support and presence in this gathering. Tratar de cumplir lo, el plan GAP y los objetivos del desarrollo sostenible. Tratar de cumplir los objetivos. To try to... Try to um, to fulfill the objectives of the GAP and uh, the, as sustainable development. Eh, solo será posible. It will only be a, uh, possible. Si somos capaces de ver los problemas reales de la humanidad y de la educación. If we are, it will only be possible if we are capable of seeing the genuine problems of humanity and of education and addressing them through education. Transformar la educación implica transformar nuestra forma de pensar, transformar nuestros espíritus. Uh, to transform education implies transforming ourselves and our very spirits. Pero también transformar las organizaciones. No se pueden transformar las organizaciones si no se transforman a las personas. And in uh, transforming organizations, in order to transform our organizations, it is a process of individual and collective transformation of us as people. La dinámica social y especialmente la educación tiene que ser eh, vista de una manera articulada. No puede funcionar el corazón si no funciona el estómago. Así tiene que funcionar la educación formal, informal y no formal. I won't get all of it, but the general idea is that uh, we have to address issues of hunger and well-being if we're if very much on the ground issues day by day in order to reach this uh, set of transformational goals that we are trying to achieve. En los ERCs jugamos un papel importante porque articulamos organizaciones y eso eh, hace que podamos promover una educación autoorganizada para que emerjan transformaciones. We as RCEs have a great responsibility and great potential because we are organizations which bring together or other organizations in this transformative process. Eh, felicito a Sinaida por la articulación ciencia, sociedad eh, en, en el plan que propone. Uh, I express my congratulations to you for the articulation that you are creating between science and society in the plan that you propose. Tenemos que eh, hacer que las comunidades aprendan del conocimiento científico y las universidades eh, acepten en los conocimientos tradicionales desde una visión sistémica y no eh, lineal. So we, ha we hope to achieve the scientific community embracing traditional knowledge and the traditional community embracing scientific knowledge in a systematic fashion. Thank you very much. Teresa, I think that your intervention would be probably the, the best one, the best final, very profound point for this part of reflection, where you point at the fact that knowledge alone would not address our problems. 
that we have to also work across variety of, of, of knowledges and cultures and that humanity is really, and humanity practiced in the communities and with the community is, is really the, the way forward. It's particularly important because a lot of RCEs uh, started and facilitated from scientists and this humanistic and social, social dimension uh, would be probably the one which uh, would help us not only be more productive and strategic, but also would sustain us as a, uh, as a movement much longer. With this, let me thank all of you very much for your reflections. And turn the microphone to Philip, I suspect, who will run a very exciting part, celebratory part of this final session. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I return to the stage. Uh, so part of the RCE Global Conference for the past few years has been the handing out of the RCE Awards. So this year, um, I'm going to give you a little bit about background of the awards, the selection process, and then I'm going to announce some of the winners here tonight. So we had, seven, we had uh, 10 RCEs that submitted awards this year. Seven of them are here tonight, and I'm really excited to talk about their work, and I really encourage all of you to apply in the future. So, a uh, little bit about the RCE Awards. These started several years ago when we were getting all these great projects in with annual reporting, and we realized we really weren't showcasing them quite as much as we should be. And so the idea was perhaps we should create an award that would not only showcase your work, but recognize it and something that you could bring to your home community as recognized by United Nations University for the great work that you're doing. So our selection process, we go through all submitted projects and we have a review committee consisting of the UNU research team as well as regional advisors and the Ubuntu committee and some external experts from within the RCE community who of course do not themselves have projects submitted. We always try to submit different projects each year uh, this is tricky because I know a lot of you have fantastic ongoing projects and we want to give them awards every year, but that wouldn't be fair. Uh, Meryl Streep doesn't win the Oscar every year, so we try to spread the wealth a little bit. And uh, in addition to that, we try to look at some thematic areas. So as we keep talking about today, it's important to really work transdisciplinarity into every award. but. For sake of assessment, we try to look at some specific themes, so disaster risk reduction, biodiversity, traditional knowledge, health. These are some of the themes that we've asked people to submit on in the past, and you have risen to the challenge most exceptionally. So without further ado, I'm going to announce this year's winners, and I would ask a representative from the RCE to come to the stage, or the front, I should say. So for honorable mentions, in the category of climate change, RCE Chandigra on project addressing the issue of climate change by articulating information and promoting collaborations at the local level. Oh. My apologies, they are not present. <laughs> in the category of higher education and TVET, RCE Greater Dhaka, whole institutional approach for RCE Greater Dhaka through water reuse, biodiversity, conservation, youth mobilization in the commitment to GAP on ESD.
And if I could ask all attendees that receive their award, you'll come up and get your certificate, and we also have a gift bag for you. In the category of sustainable consumption and production, RCE Mina, new design of Safer Canoes, a documentary. So we have two things for you. Don't leave them up here with us. In the category, these are now acknowledged flagship projects. The category of youth, RCE Greater Eastern Uganda Youth Empowerment for Promoting Sustainable Development, Education, and Practice. In the category of higher education and TVET, RCE Saskatchewan, the Sustainability and Education Policy Network, leading through multi-sector learning. In the category of biodiversity, RCE Greater Pwani, the Botanical Garden, a transformative and holistic learning laboratory. In the category of biodiversity, RCE Okayama, the Okayama Creature Village Project. For Outstanding Flagship Project in the category of Disaster Risk Reduction, RCE Srinagar, Climate Smart and Disaster Resilient Communities in the India Himalaya Region. Thank you so much to all the applicants this year. We had some that were not able to attend, but they will be announced through our portal and through the bulletin. I also want to say the RCE Awards are a way to showcase your work, but once recognized, they're a great way to promote your work. So bring them back to your communities. Show them that you have one of the largest collection of ESD experts in the world saying, yes, this project is recognized, this project is important, this project is necessary. It's a great way to not only motivate your home community, but celebrate your success. Thank you very much. Give yourself one more round of applause.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, next program we would like to call upon Professor Suratman, Master of Science, to deliver closing remarks as uh, rector representative. Uh, again, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We hope uh, we are still uh, happy in this Ballet Senat. It's very ancient building. This uh, uh, heritage building, it is usually used by, uh, by my president. So not all people <laughs> allow to sit here because it's very academic uh, representative uh, meeting room. So thank you very much. And I belong to uh, university and on behalf of my rectors, uh, I would like to say uh, thank you for uh, warm uh, collaboration and very tight time to discuss and very uh, useful uh, idea and very strong uh, formulation as mentioned by uh, Mrs. Uh, Gineida, thank you, and all the uh, delegation of HCE network in in many countries. Of course, I would like to say thank you very much, and of course, Robert Mario, and we'll close this event. And I would like to say that Kajamada has a lot of experience during the five days discussion. I will learn more and we can learn more together to shape our uh, globe to deliver the ESD for SDGs for the future generation. Yeah, I'm old already. <laughs> so we prefer better life for the young generation and this uh, the mandatory of countries, mandatory of uh, this uh, vision by SDGs program. As we know that we move from Millennium Development Goals to SDGs. So the governance, the uh, academics, uh, uh, and university, schools, business, and many partnership will, I think, will are responsible to uh, conserve the world for the better life. So we have uh, three strategic already as formulate, and we are going to implementing the formulation and we hope we can exchange by uh, digital communication and I would like to say again that this global conference at CE is success in Indonesia 
and in OGM. So again, thank you very much. And we are going to uh, have another meeting, the last meeting, in the farewell dinner with our Bobati in Sleman district. So thank you very much and enjoy uh, traveling to home countries, Africa, America, Europe, many things. We can applaud together for happiness. Oh. <laughs> Save our globe. Save our world. Save our life for the young generation. Thank you very much. And now we kindly ask Professor Mario Tabukanan, Senior Research Fellow, to deliver closing remarks to. Mr. Vice Rector, Professor Dr. Suratman, Vice Rector for Research and Community Service, uh, my fellow members of the RCE community, good evening. The global RCE community has come together for the 10th time. This is the 10th time. And every time we are assembled as one community, I feel that the RCE bond, the Ubuntu spirit, is getting stronger and stronger. There were only seven RCEs when we started in 2005. And now the number has increased many folds and still growing and growing into the future. And the glue that binds us is our passion and common desire to work together to empowering communities and contribute to creating sustainable societies. We are delighted that many RCEs worldwide are represented here at this conference. And as we look back to the last four days, we had lots in store. We had lots to discuss with, to discuss on, and to get involved in. And we expect that the RCE community to avail of this platform to enhance inter-RCE networking and contribute, continue to contribute to develop the global learning space. On behalf of you in your IES, the entire ESD program team of you in your IES, whom I would like to request to please stand to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of them, I have a pleasant duty to express our profound gratitude to all those who have made this event a reality and a success. The days went by so fast, so it seems. It has been a fantastic week. But as the saying goes, all good things come to an end. We thank the organizers for the splendid job. First and foremost, to our outstanding hosts, the stakeholders of RCE Jogjakarta. <laughs> led by Universitas Gajamada. I would I would have loved to mention them one by one, but it's impossible. Many of them are outside of this room, but I can only say that we had the support of the whole institution. Thank you. The amount of work that the team has put into the planning and preparation has paved the way 
to this week's productive, very fruitful, and exciting conference. It has been tremendous. And we, as we already applauded your great contributions to the RCE movement, I hope this provides a strong inspiration to future hosts to make the RCE Global Conference even vibrant into the future. We also thank the partner organizations, the government of Indonesia, through the various ministries, as we heard from the opening, various ministries were here, Ministry for Human Development, BAPTINAS, Ministry of Research, Technology and Higher Education, the government of Yogyakarta, a special government, the intergovernmental and international organizations who are here, UNESCO, UNIP, IAU, ASEAN Secretariat, SIMEO, and others have made this an enriching conference. UNOIS is honored and privileged to be working with all these collaborating organizations. And a special mention goes to the members of the Ubuntu Committee of Peers for the RCEs, for their support and guidance in assessing RCE applications and in the strategic direction of the RCE movements. I would like to uh, please request them to rise, to be recognized. Zul Razak has just left. Chuck Hopkins is here with us. We have Akpisi, Yus, and Piran. Would you please rise to be recognized? We have other members who are not here, Clemens and some others, so we also recognize them in absentia. But let us not forget that the RCE movement is about networking and learning in communities for creating sustainable societies. But RCEs are not only significant in your region, in the region in which they are geographically located, where they provide a unique opportunity to promote learning and development for SD, but they are also important at the international level where they constitute a global learning space for sustainable development. And I am certain that you have gained from this conference and intensified your networking efforts. It is my pleasant duty on behalf of you in new IES and the collaborating organizations to thank all of you, all the participants here this week, and give a round of applause to all of us. Uh, do enjoy your stay here in Jakarta. We look forward to a continuing dialogue on ESD, on SD, into the future, and we wish you all the best Terima kasih, sama-sama. Well, I, 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 I'm seeing a gavel here, a gavel. So let me now, the 10th Global RCE Conference has been officially ended. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you. And two announcements. There is uh, some announcement. So I pass on to the, uh, the MC there. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Hello. The there is a gift for UNUIAS from RCE Kano. Actually, this project won an award last year. So, huh? yeah, this is.
Actually, this, this project won an award last year in uh, Okayama. And this is to the Global UNURC service Center, UNUIAS Tokyo, Japan, complement of uh, RTE Kano, Nigeria. This was actually crafted. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, you and you team, yes. <laughs> yeah. You and you team. <laughs> the night. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Everyone, I would like to make an announcement about regarding the logistic thing for tomorrow. Departure to the airport. <laughs> um, for this departure at 7.25 and 7.50, uh, those staying at UC Hotel, please be ready three hours prior to departure. And for those staying at uh, uh, Jogja Plaza Hotel, be ready at 5 o'clock. And for those staying at UC Hotel, uh, be ready at 4.30 early in the morning because there will be the, uh, the, uh, we, we cannot expect the traffic uh, during uh, the departure. For those uh, departure at, seven, uh, at 10 o'clock, please be ready at 6.30 for those staying at UC and for Jogja Plaza Hotel at 7.30. So at least three hours before departure, you must be ready at the hotel. The bus will pick you up first at UC and then go to Jogja Plaza Hotel to drop you 